What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach and in this video we're going to answer the question how to convert a string to a float in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. What's up everybody? So like I mentioned, we're tackling the question of how to convert a string to a float in Python. So what I've gone and done is I've basically set up these little test cases. So I have a regular string that's just the float that's in string format, so this number 5.4345. And then I also created some other strings that are, we want to convert to floating point numbers. And so, for instance, I got this one with a comma. Um, and like basically it's just a, a large float number in string format. And then I created one that is this that is mostly that something you might see with like money. So we call it the money string because it's got the dollar sign in it. And we're gonna see what we can do or what we need to do to convert these values into um, these string values into floats. And so if we um, go ahead and run this, all right, so you're gonna see right off, we just ran this and you're gonna see, here's your string number and this is what it looks like. We can see those are the types that are string. These are our test cases. So in this video, we're gonna talk about two different methods that you can do this. Um, and one is probably the one that mostly you'll do this with. Um, and the second is one that is maybe not as well known. Um, when I was doing some research on this, I, uh, this second method I thought was kind of interesting and cool. I've used it in other ways, but I thought it was cool to be able to use this for strings, so I wanted to show it. So the first method is just using the float um, function. So I'm actually, this is gonna be float like this. So just like in the video where we talk about converting ints to strings. So here's the first method. So method number one, we're going to convert, or we're gonna convert a string to a float using the float method, um, float function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable float num is equal to float of string number and print, we're gonna show you the float, what it's gonna look like, as well as the type. So if we do this with this first test case, we're gonna see the result that we get. All right, so with this first test case, the test case number one is the string number. You can see that it just converted it the same, the string value into, what I mean, when you print it out, they look the same, but the underlying um, information shows that now we convert it from a string to a float. So let's try this, what happens with a comma string. We change this to the comma string. We'll copy that over. Oh, I just have to do that. And then we run it. Let's see what happens. Oh, so it looks like we got an error. And the reason is, is because of the fact that when you have a string and you want to convert it to a float, if you're just going to use this float method, it basically needs to just be a number, a straight up number. It can't have any other symbols. It can't have any other you know characters that are not numbers in it. So for instance, for example, if we just remove this comma string and did this, or the comma in that test case, we see that it converted it. But if we put it back to how it was, um, we run into that error. So the way that you'd actually have to probably solve this if you still wanted to use the float method is by, like I mentioned in one of my other videos of how to remove characters, um, in a string, we would use something like the replace method. And I would just say replace the comma with an empty spot. And then if we make sure that that's got our comma still in it, and then boom, you can see that there's our original comma string. It was a string. And here is the number now and the float. So we can see that we converted that. Now, if we do the money, if we do the money um, string as well, you're gonna see that we run into the same issue. We're gonna get an error, and that's because one, we still have that character, that dollar sign character. You can see from, the money string has two, two characters and it has the dollar sign and the comma. Well, we use this from the, the previous method to um, essentially remove the comma, but we have to basically do another replace on top of this, and this will then remove both of these, both of these characters, the dollar sign and the comma, and then we can convert that. 
so basically, if, if you haven't seen my other video, what happens when you do the replace, what happens is it's basically turning um, this goes, so this money string is going from that value to one, um, one two, three, four, dot, five, five. That is basically the string that is getting passed into this float function, which allows us to give us this answer here. So that is the first method. Basically with floats, um, if you want to use this, then you need to make sure that there are no other uh, characters within the string. You need to remove them all and make sure there's only numbers and a decimal point. And it has to only be like one decimal point um, or else you run into other errors. All right, so method number two is we're going to use the, loca the locale uh, package. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this lo this the locale and I'm going to just make it so it's using some formats that I want it to be in. Um, and you can see that it asks for a category and then the locale that you're going to use. And so I'm basically passing in a, a uh, English US UTF-8 that I'm going to that I'm going to use for this locale and then from there the lo locale this is going to be my locale num and I'm going to use locales, I always say locale, but I call it just local. Um, they're ATOF -A -T -A -T function, which basically means, you know, string to float. So we're going to use that, and then we're going to pass in our first one, which is our string num. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did up here. I'm basically just going to... Um, print out the local number and also the type so that we can see what it is. And so if we run this, you see that we get, so we passed in the string number, which was this, and then we got out this value, which is matching, and but we can see that the underlying data type changed from a string, which was before, to a float. So well, what happens if we pass in the comma one? Do we have to do anything different than what we did with uh, local? or I mean with the float method, method one. And the answer is that we don't. So what's nice is, is local actually takes into consideration for commas, meaning that it, it basically assume, it has some built-in functionality that tells us that um, you know numbers, they can have both decimal places and commas in them um, because we separate, you know, once we get to a thousand, we separate that by a comma or so on and so forth. And now what happens if we pass in the money string? Will it do the same thing for us? And the answer for that is no. So that's the thing that's different here is that local only assumes that you know, numbers have the ability to have commas and decimal places. So if we actually want to um, use the local method, we still need to um, just remove that extra, uh, the extra character of the dollar sign. And if we do that, then we actually get the money string that we wanted in number format. So as you can see, that those are the two methods that you can use. And there's there's a couple of th more things that you can do, but these are two methods that are, are very helpful and probably the ones that you probably use most of the time. Um, float being the one that is probably the most common and most widely used, um, but it does have caveats. It has the caveats that it only takes in a string format of a number, meaning that you know that number could essentially be it could that number could be this just five or it could be you know a decimal point you have to make sure that it's only a number it can't have any other extra characters like commas dollar signs and underscores and all that stuff it just has to you just have to give it the number and it'll do it so that begs the question of like well hey what about an extra space to answer this question so if we put an extra space here all right, so if we put an extra space here and then we come down, we put our string number in, well, that's a, considered a character, so will that throw everything off? Will that make an issue? And the answer with that is no, it won't. Um, basically, it strips off the extra spaces and if there are any in it, and then it'll pass in just the number and then it'll convert that to a float. So if you do have spaces in there, at least at like the beginning or the end, you're fine. But if you have like a space in here like this, like in the middle of it, then that is going to throw an issue because you're basically doing two different things. And then at that point, you'd have to do something where it's like you do a split and give you it gives you two different numbers. And then you use a split or a map 
type functionality to get what you want. But those are essentially the two methods. Go ahead and play with this. Try it out. See what you like the best. To be honest, the one that I use the most is float. Um, but there are cases like I, I just showed with the, the comma where this, this, local, this local method might be more beneficial to use that than just going with the straight up float. So play with it. Try it out. See what you think. And thank you for watching. If this is providing value, please hit the like button below and have a good rest of your day and keep on coding.